What's happening, chess fans? Welcome to Net Chess and Chill. Today is episode number nine of Blunderman, and Blunderman is just an episode series where we go over some of the games that I played. Um, recently, I've started putting the analysis videos at the end of my games, but we're going to carry this all the way up until episode number 22 just to cover all the games. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so, from here, um, all right. So on this day, I played with 88.9% accuracy. My opponent played with 64.1. I didn't have any blunders, which is great. So Blunderman would be happy right now. He could probably just have the day off. But we must continue. Um, I did have a miss, and I'd like to see where it was. This was a rather short game, so this won't be a long video by any means. But Okay, so we had book moves until here, and let's slow it down a bit. So... You know, I, I push my e pawn, he does his. I started trying to do this little scotch thing when I was playing white. It worked a little bit, but I just, I I don't know it well enough, I guess. And um, I started not having so much success. So, um, but I knew how to do it in this game, um, at least to get a slight advantage. So I take with my pawn. If he takes with his pawn, I have a little trick. That's it. Right now he can't castle, and uh, yeah, that's that. So sometimes people play this against me where they pull this knight out, and then when I do take the queen, they'll take with their knight, and they can still castle, but their knight's kind of in a weird place. Um, but he didn't do that, so he can't castle. So from here, I take with my knight, literally a free pawn, right? Um, he takes, um, and... I guess I have ways to attack his knight is basically, oh, let's see, like, you know, yeah, they want him to develop another piece, do something different. So I develop my bishop. This is my miss. So I would like to see, yeah, I missed the fork, the holiest of forks. And we love this fork, right? Like, I mean, this is the one right here. Um, a lot of times you'll do something like this to ensure that this happens while the king is still on its starting square. But I got rid of the queen and bumped the king over. So I have the perfect setup. But I didn't see it in this game. Um, I moved my bishop out first. And the king moves over and actually defends this. Um, it's a blunder. Let's see why. Okay, so that would have been the best move. Um, it's a blunder because it gives away a free knight. Right? So I take and boom. Bishop out. I'm thinking about castling, trying to be safe. My king's in the middle of the board. Boom. Castled. So, knight out. I probably just take it. Yeah. And uh, he has to take with a pawn. So, now he's got doubled pawns. Ugly. And we're getting close to the end of the game. I, I give a check. He slides over. I take the rook. So. Yeah. So. I knew he didn't like that, and... I think even in the game I stated, I'm sure he's pretty upset. And here shortly, um, things don't get any better for him. I take that. He slides his rook over. I slide my bishop out, blocking that file. Um, happy to trade pieces and open up my rook. Um, he takes. I put my knight out. He comes on in. This is not where I would like his piece to be. But, yeah. If my knight wasn't here, he could he, he could definitely do that. But <laughs> I, I moved my knight out. So, All right, guys. Uh, so with that being said, he resigned at that moment because he was very upset. He played like a 250, and I played like a 1200, apparently. Um, my opening was great, and my middle game was great, and we didn't even make it to the end game. So... Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you on episode 10 of Blunderman.